All right, um, so I'm Akhilesh from Android Systems Team. Um, today, I'm gonna to talk about how we use IO Uning in Android OTA. Uh, so uh, today, I'll also touch upon some of the performance results in Android uh, OTA with IO Uning, uh, and then uh, the core topic, uh, how we are trying to explore the new UBLK uh, user space blog driver. Um, just a quick recap um, to those who are not familiar with Virtual AB. Um, Virtual AB was introduced in Android 11 uh, for Android OTAs. Uh, basically, it gives you a seamless update, uh, ability to roll back if the new uh, boot fails, and uh, it uses minimal space, wherein you don't have to duplicate uh, dynamic partitions. Um, the way we implement Virtual AB is through snapshots. Um, the, um, all the uh, um, dynamic partitions are implemented as snapshots. Um, I went through this in the, my previous LPC. Um, so we implement uh, snapshots in user space uh, in Android 13, uh, wherein um, all the snapshot merging is also done in the user space. Um, as part of the uh, uh, virtual AB uh, in Android 12 and Android 13, we introduced uh, Android specific uh, uh, curl format, uh, wherein um, so we have four specific operations, uh, primarily um, zero, wherein uh, a block is zeroed out, uh, copy operation, meaning uh, we copy the data from block X to block Y. Um, then we have a replace op, wherein uh, we have to replace block X data, and that is the operation where we actually store the data in a compressed format. And then we recently introduced XOR in um, in Android 13, where uh, the destination block is an XOR of pre-existing block, but we just store the changed content in the curl uh, curl block device. So this is the uh, uh, curl format we use in the uh, in the Android OTA for virtual AB. Now, given this. Um, Let's take a simple example of a snapshot merge for a copy operation. Um, so, so for a snapshot merge operation um, in with respect to copy, we copy a data from block X to block Y, meaning we have three system calls here. We read the data from block X to user space, and then we write the data to block Y, and then we do an F-sync. So in a typical incremental OTA, uh, uh, where you get a monthly uh, security updates kind of a thing, where um, we have about um, 350 to 500K copy operations. So that results in about a million and a half to two million syscalls. Um, so, so what exactly uh, are these, uh, what is the overhead of these syscalls? Um, so as you see here, uh, we have the uh, profiling data uh, where uh, to read the data from block X, uh, we spend about 40% CPU cycles. And then just to write it back uh, and then do a flash, uh, it, it, take another, it takes another 10 to 15%. So effectively, we are spending about 50 to 55% CPU cycles just doing the merge operation for copy operations. Now, that being said, um, how do we use IO Uring here? So this is a, as you see, uh, this is a very high IO bound operation. So this, that's where uh, we used IO Uring uh, with a Q depth of 32. Um, so so with that, uh, we were effectively cut cut down the CPU cycles to less than about 10 to 10 to 12 percent, both the read and write operations. Uh, although we don't uh, use um, SQ poll right now, but if we we are trying to explore that as well, but with SQ poll enabled we can effectively cut down all the syscalls completely. Um, so, so what exactly does this mean, cutting down CPU cycles with respect to snapshot merge? Um, so all this means we are, we are cutting down the uh, snapshot merge time. So for instance, on Pixel 6, uh, running the latest Android T, uh, with IO Uring enabled, we were able to see merge time completion in about 60 to 75 seconds for an incremental ODF of about 200 MB. Uh, without IO Uring, uh, it used to take about two to three minutes. Uh, in a worst case, for instance, we have seen instances where it goes all the way up to 10 to 20 minutes as well. Um, now, why do we need snapshot merge to be completed fast? Um, because, because that is the next slide. Um, so until the snapshot merge is completed, um, all the um, uh, slash system, the root, the root file system is mounted off DM user. Uh, so DM user is a kernel module. Uh, just like it's a user space block, uh, uh, emulating the user space block device. So it's an out of three kernel patch today where we maintain specific for Android devices on five different kernels. 
So until snapshot merge is completed, all the IO from slash system or slash product goes to DM user and DM user routes that IO to the user space. And the, there is a, we have a user space daemon called snap user D, which actually handles the IO activity. Um, so, so there are two uh, drawbacks here. Uh, one, we have to maintain. It's a technical debt of um, maintaining the DM user on different kernels as in we go down the path. Second, uh, from the profiling, we see that there is an overhead of about 10% CPU, meaning that anytime you do any IO activity until merge is completed, for instance, you launch an app, and the app launch IO has to go to DM user. So there is constant back and forth operation between user space and kernel. So that is an overhead. So to address this problem, um, we are exploring the new UBLK driver, which just got merged upstream uh, in 520. Um, so this is an um, uh, UBLK is a user space block driver, which is IO using based, meaning uh, all the IO. Uh, so we have the UBLK driver and you have the UBLK server. The communication between this server and the UBLK driver happens through uh, I, the newly added IO using op command. Um, so 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 with this, uh, it perfectly fits the existing architecture of what we were looking into. Um, so uh, we just uh, we are just we are still in the exploration phase, but we had a bare minimal prototype completed on Pixel Six running Android mainline uh, and with an UBLK driver target enabled uh, on six point zero RC one build. Um, the only difference we have with the current architecture is that we have to uh, stack DM linear on top of um, UBLK driver. So I'll, I'll come to that in the next slide, why we do that. Um, but uh, the primary um, changes we are looking at right now here is that we'll be adding a new uh, UBLK Android target, which will communicate with the daemon, meaning that any IO request we get from the UBLK block driver, that IO request uh, will be handled by the new target. Uh, so currently um, the daemon, uh, UBLK server daemon handles only the loopback target. Uh, which we needed for copy operations, uh, but we also need it for other Android specific operations like Libris, Zor, and Zero Op. So that will be handled by the UBLK Android target. Um, with the bare mineral prototype completed on Pixel 6, uh, we saw some really promising numbers uh, wherein we, we, could, we could essentially see some of the latency cut down uh, with the new uh, driver. Now, that being said, um, so um, there are some couple of challenges here. One, why do we need to stack DM linear on top of UBLK driver? There are two, there are two issues here. One, um, once the snapshot merge is completed, uh, we need to remove the UBLK block driver so that uh, slash system is mounted off the uh, underlying base device. Uh, so the life cycle of the block driver, UBLK block driver should only be until the merge snapshot merge is done. Now, the device mapper infrastructure gives us the ability to switch DM tables once the merge is completed, meaning uh, we can suspend the IOs and then resume the IOs. That infrastructure is not present today in UBLK block driver. That is something which we probably uh, will have to enhance it, or we're, we're trying to see how, how, to, how effectively we can do it because uh, we don't know the overhead of stacking DM linear on top of UBLK driver. Um, so that is one. Um, second, um, during the uh, Android boot phase, uh, so we between Android first stage and second stage daemon, um, we have an intermediate stage called SA Linux transition, wherein um, we we set the labels to uh, the uh, user space processes. So, so as you see here, uh, the file system is mounted uh, on top of UBLK driver. So this happens right at the first stage in it. So during first stage unit, there are no SE Linux context. Um, so all the IO activities will still be served by the daemon. Uh, but when we have to lab set the labels to the daemon, we have to kill the daemon and restart the daemon. So there's a small duration in time where uh, the IOs have to be paused or queued in the driver because there's a duration where we have to uh, relaunch the daemon with the right set of SE Linux labels, which means that some amount of queuing is uh, is required in the uh, UBLK block driver. Um, so those are the two primary challenges which uh, 
we are looking at right now. Um, we, we are uh, still prototyping this work. Uh, hopefully, uh, uh, we should we should have this uh, in the upcoming Android uh, releases. And there are, of course, some trivial changes in the server as well, uh, since uh, we see that uh, uh, UBLK server uses some of the C++ 20 uh, operations like coroutines, which are not supported in Android. So we may have to change some of those. Um, but yeah, uh, with this, uh, the result is that we don't have to, we don't have any uh, out-of-tree kernel patch. Um, that is a big plus point. Uh, and second, uh, everything related to the OTA is in user space. So you, we have effectively uh, in control uh, for uh, for the specific Android core format devices. With that, um, I will open the floor for the questions. So let me see if we have any questions in the chat room. It seems like auguring is kind of exploding within the kernel ecosystem, and people are rushing to add lots of new use cases to it. Um, are there any gotchas we should consider when continuing to adopt it within Android? Uh, so, uh, yeah, so, so there are a lot of new uh, um, features which are getting added to IO Uring. For instance, the new IO Uring op command, which is being used in the UBLK driver, which is really promising. So uh, so some of the features, uh, we may have to uh, see how exactly it fits to the Android ecosystem. For instance, uh, let me give you an example. Um, the SQ poll uh, or, uh, feature, which is really good because it cuts down the syscalls. But, but having said that, uh, it constant polling, on, it hogs one of the CPUs. Now, is it good for the Android ecosystem? Probably not, because one thread will be one. You'll be, you're effectively taking out one CPUs, uh, which constantly polls. So, so, uh, so it, it's it's important to see the trade-offs uh, and keep track of what are the new features which comes in. Yeah, I, I think one of the gotchas I would warn people about is IOU Ring is under very active development. And so there are constantly new IOU ring commands being added. Exactly. Um, and sometimes there are exciting high, high severity CVEs that come with some of them. And at the moment, we don't have good ways of controlling, uh, you know, new IOU ring commands via something like set comp or uh, SE Linux, as far as I know. Um, and part of that is because IOU ring is intended to be really fast. Um, and so th that stuff will come over time, but right. it may be that some investment is needed uh, before people try to use IOU ring outside of very restricted system context inside uh, Android. At least that'd be my recommendation. Yes, makes sense. Um, so you're right. Uh, so, uh, I, I do see some of the um, LSM uh, SA Linux policies being added for IOU ring op command, which is a recent command which has got which got added. But yes, uh, um, it's it's important to understand that. Uh, I mean, for instance, in our use case, uh, the daemon is completely works under the root privileges, so we are completely in control of it. Um, yeah, as and when we go down the path uh, with more. Uh, SE comp and SE Linux uh, capabilities added, then we can think of uh, exploring use, uh, are using on the other set of use cases. Yeah, so a security IORing during CMD LSM hook was just added. Do you plan on using that? Uh, we don't know since we are still exploring the uh, UBLK block driver. Uh, we haven't reached that far yet, but certainly yes. Uh, if if the uh, SE Linux capability has been enabled, then we will we will have to add it.
So yes, that's right that uh, SE Linux and Smack both, uh, uh, there are hooks in both and uh, that's applicable for 5.19. It will be backported and it is, I mean, originally it was done for 6.0. Great, okay, that's, that's good to know, yep. All right, thank you very much. Uh, we next next uh, speaker.